Good evening, a very warm welcome to Discovery Bay International School and our secondary school webinar. My name is Sheila Stamp, I am the Director of IT and Communications at DBIS and with me today are my colleagues Simon Oakley, our Head of Secondary, Pete Roberts, our Deputy Head of Secondary, Aaron Harris, our Assistant Head of Secondary and Helen Harries, our Admissions Manager. With the current COVID situation, it's been difficult to give parents the opportunity to visit our school. And so the aim of this webinar is to give you some insight into our secondary school and to ask any questions that you might have. We will start with a short video of our secondary school and then we will have a question and answer session with the team. If you could type any questions that you have into the chat box, we will answer them immediately after the video and we'll just go straight into the video now. It is my privilege to introduce the secondary phase of Discovery Bay International School. At DBIS, we are aware that secondary school is a period of great change for students as they enter adolescence and start to prepare for examinations that will launch them into the world as young adults. We are fortunate to be able to offer small class sizes at DBIS which ensure that our students' learning can be tailored to the individual academic needs of every child. I've been at the school since year three and I have loved my time here. It's a very friendly and inclusive school and I feel as though I've made lifelong friends. We have over 40 different nationalities which gives us an insight into loads of different cultures and really enriches the school life. DBIS students in years 7 to 9 follow a broad, challenging and engaging inquiry-based curriculum which supports them to develop as problem solvers, critical thinkers and independent learners in readiness for their examination years. We get the opportunities to work together on challenging STEAM projects during STEAM week. We can use our skills and learning from lots of different subjects like science, DT and maths to help solve a problem or complete challenges. We are given the opportunity to express ourselves in a safe and engaging environment. Our humanities lessons allow us to explore a wide breadth of subjects together using an inquiry-based approach. Recently, we have been able to design and market our own games console create a civil rights campaign and take part in a model United Nations to try and resolve conflict. Mandarin Chinese is taught in every year group throughout the school, while French and Spanish are optional subjects at the secondary level. In years 10 to 13, our students have increased ownership and are able to pursue their interests and passions through their chosen IGCSE pathway in year 11 and specialise further through the A-level programme in sixth form. A-level media studies has been a really fun course to do as we get to express our own creativity and individuality. Um, the coursework is probably my favorite part because it lets us explore topics and subjects we're interested in and develop our own ideas. I really enjoy music in DBIS. The coursework is really interesting and challenging and we get the opportunity to perform live throughout the year through various music groups such as orchestra, rock bands and choirs. We firmly believe that balanced, happy and confident students can achieve their full academic potential and we proactively work to support the well-being of every student from year seven through to the sixth form. We are very lucky to have so many supportive teachers who look after us as individuals and as a group at DBIS to help us make the most of the opportunities that the school has to offer. The sixth form staff and university guidance team work very closely with us when we are making our choices for university and guide us through the various steps we need to take during our application process. As a result, most of us are able to get into our first choices of university wherever that is in the world. Our school also strongly believes in sports for all and our teachers encourage everyone of any ability to find a sport or physical activity that they enjoy. At DBIS we make a difference through approaching community service work by fundraising, educating students and the water community and through a hands-on approach such as the charity drives and kindness walks for the homeless with Impact HK. Our students are encouraged to reach beyond the curriculum and develop skills and interests that will strengthen their abilities to positively address challenges, work collaboratively and to be of service to others. We are immensely proud of our students. I would like to formally welcome you to DBIS secondary webinar. I hope that you had an opportunity to get a brief taste of some of the many fantastic things about the secondary phase of DBIS. 
Now, DBIS, as I hope many of you already know, is an inclusive school, and we're very focused on ensuring that every single student here is able to make the most of their abilities through the great wide-ranging opportunities we give to every single child here. We offer an excellent education, which is rigorous and supports every student to develop in the way that's most effective for them. We are renowned in Hong Kong, both for our pastoral care and our well-being provision. And we support our students to develop skills that not only allow them to face the challenges through school, but also to be a take on those challenges after school in a positive and meaningful way. And so they can make the best choices as they go forward in their lives. We believe that we offer an excellent academic provision for our students from, from whenever the students join our school. And that can be seen for our IGCSE results for our year 11 students, all the way through to our year 13s with their A-level results. In fact, the A-level results last summer from our school were the best in Hong Kong. That's along with, of course, the hard efforts and talents of our students. In addition as well, with the fantastic provision offered by our university team, have allowed our students many years now to be able to go to the first choice university in nearly every occasion. At this moment, I'd like to go back to you, the whole reason why we're here, of course, to find out some of your questions. Thank you. Well, while we're waiting for some of your questions, um, we do get asked quite a number of things regularly on school tours. So, um, Simon, would you mind um, answering, for example, what subjects are studied at the school and what qualifications are taken at DBIS? So we offer a wide range of, of subjects and qualifications, starting from our year sevens. In year seven, eight and nine follow a very similar pathway. So, of course, we offer English, uh, maths and sciences, as you would expect. We have a, a joined up humanities programme, which not only draws from areas such as history and geography, but also focuses on things from psychology, business studies, religious education. So it, it creates that breadth, real value for the students to understand how these things connect. All of our students uh, study Mandarin and they pick up another language, either French or Spanish on top of that. And of course, on top of that, we have our physical education. And very key for us is our Learning for Life program, which supports our students in a PSH PSHE way to develop the skills, the broad holistic skills that they need going forwards. Now, those, those subjects uh, we take forward into year 10, where students have more ownership of the subjects that they will take going forwards. Every single student here will continue with English language, English literature, mathematics, and also the sciences, but then they're able to specialize further. So for example, from humanities subjects, they pick up either history, geography, or media studies or others. They're also in the arts, they would have pick up art and music uh, and design technology, which they also do at year seven, eight, and nine as well, of course. And there are a number of other areas there. Now, most of those follow through to the IGCSE, taken at the end of year 11, but we do offer a BTEC in business level two, which is the equivalent of the IGCSE as well there. After year 11, our students move on to year 12 and 13, where they predominantly follow the A-level program, which is renowned all over the world and is able to, to get students into top universities all over the world. Now, we offer a broad spectrum there. The last academic year, we offered 19 different subjects at A-level. And we also have two BTECs there, BTEC Business and BTEC Travelers and Tourism which are alternative pathways, they're level three qualifications, which are equivalent to the A-level as well, with students typically starting with four subjects in year 12. At the end of that, they use an AS qualification, a year 12 qualification, which is half of an A-level. And then they usually take three of those subjects forward to get the complete requisite of A-levels. And that those three A-levels will normally get students into the top universities around the world, depending of course, on the courses they're looking to do and uh, exactly what specifications are required. Um, please feel free to type any of your questions into the chat. Oh yes, we have got one coming up just now. Um, um, may I ask whether candidates need to be to do an admission test? 
what are being tested. My son born in 2010 is currently in year five, not year if, sure if he should apply for year seven or year eight for 2021-22. Ellen, are you able to answer that? Um, yes. Um, on admission, we do not test, we don't ask any formal testing. Um, we look for um, previous school reports, um, a reference from a current school, and then it's subject to um, an interview, which at the moment is being conducted online. Uh, to answer the second part in terms of uh, applying for 2021, it really depends on the date of birth. But for um, a current year five student, you'd be looking at year six for 21, 22, and then year seven for 20, 22, 23. That's just based on what the information you've given me now. Right. Um, thank you, Helen. Uh, while we're waiting, oh, can you tell us more about your sports and music education? Yes, I've got this one. Hi, I'm Aaron, everybody. Um, yeah, so we, op we offer um, a, a majority of non-selective um, sporting activities throughout the school. So we call them extracurricular activities, um, also known as co-curricular activities from other schools. And these are either just internally based or we also run tournaments with other schools um, during normality. We also have um, selected groups that also travel overseas, for example, through our prestigious Phobosia competitions. And that does apply to the sporting, uh, musical, also mathematical um, areas within our provisions that we um, supply. Um, but we don't just offer a wide range of music and sporting opportunities. We also offer debating, coding, photography, and all these other areas um, which we know um, our students have. So. In terms of ECA provisions that we um, supply at DBIS, um, it's vast and there's something for everyone. We pride ourselves on our ECA provision. Can I just add one little comment to that as well, which Aaron has Dave carefully covered and well, thank you. We do actually have over 100 ECAs, and I think it's quite useful to just have an idea of how large that is, of course. It is very significant. I'm sorry, can I add something also? In terms of the ECA programme, it is included oh. in school fees as well. There, we do not charge extra for those ECAs. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about the sports facilities at the school? Yeah, I'll take this one. Um, hello, everyone. Peter here. Um, we, we're fortunate, in fact, that we have, um, um, I would say, 70 75% full size, 70 to 75% of full size AstroTurf pitch on site. Uh, which we utilize for, for physical education lessons and sports competitions and fixes, etc. We also are fortunate enough to have our own pool, 25 meter pool, six lane pool, which um, affords us opportunities in PE lessons and beyond competitive swim meets, etc. But also um, inter house competitions and things like that. We have a bespoke um, globe area, which is actually used not just for sport and PE but also for the arts as well. Performance is a nice space for us there. And we have a gym as well in school, which we use for indoor facilities, such as gymnastics, basketball, badminton, etc. cetera. Um, could you elaborate a bit on the classroom facilities as well, our labs and, and, and such like? State of the art science labs, absolutely. But you also have so the fantastic DT design technology facilities, mm -hmm. as well as fantastic art rooms with all the latest equipment. Um, we have our top range kind of a computer suite and our dis discovery lab as well, as well as our green room. Mm. Um, so there are many fantastic facilities here to support the education. Also, as you can see behind us, um, this state of the art multi-purpose mm. library, um, which is cross phase. Um, Moving on, uh, please feel free to ask, um, type anything into the qu question chat. We really would appreciate your questions and anything you'd like to find out. We have a few other things that come up in um, the tours that we do. For example, um, people often ask us what the opportunities are for student leadership. Uh, I don't know if one of you would like to tell us about that. Yep, yep. so um, in the junior part of the secondary, we have our student council. Um, that's one of the leadership opportunities for people um, who want to improve their leadership skills and also have um, an impact on, on the rest of the cohorts. And then as we move up the school, we also have our um, prefix, oh, sorry, our house captains in year 11, and then we have our prefix in year 12, and then we have senior prefix in year 13, plus 
our head students as well, our head boy and our head girl. Um, but there's numerous, obviously there's numerous opportunities for other leadership um, throughout the school, such as during our ECAs as well. Mm. Um, we have our um, modeled United um, Nations, yeah. modeled United Nations um, extracurricular club. Um, so there's lots of opportunities for students to develop these um, interpersonal skills, in, including leadership, mm -hmm. and also throughout our Learning for Life provision that we supply as well. As, as an example of that, just to just to follow on from Aaron, there would be our um, some of our students have recently pieced together a virtual PE ECA platform, if you like, mm -hmm. which, given recent times, has been really really valuable as an opportunity, not just as a learning platform for our students, but also as an outlet for their well-being, their stress, their activity levels. It's been incredibly popular with the students, but also incredibly popular with families as well with challenges presented on there. And that's all student-driven and student-centered. So um, hopefully a very good example there for you. We have a question about the campuses. Are primary and secondary school in the same campus? Absolutely. They're in mostly in different buildings, but they are interconnected. Uh, I think it's really important um, that they are, so the students do interact with each other. I mean, one of the things that Aaron was talking about in terms of our student leadership is we do try and have events and activities going on between the two, the two phases of the school. I mean, certainly this year has obviously been a little bit different, but the more we've been able to involve our secondary students in supporting the primary students, it's great for the primary students, of course, but it also gives great opportunities for developing skills and leadership and things like that for our secondary students. One of the really good events this year has been an English writing competition where our year nine students have been supporting our year six students. Uh, and that's gone, that's been a really fantastic achievement. I mean, for all of those students involved, and a number of them actually won awards on the back of that Hong Kong competition. We have another question um, regarding Mandarin. Is it taught in simplified Chinese character or traditional Chinese character? Uh, I believe, um, and this was a little bit specific possibly, I believed it's taught in simplified Chinese character as its, its mainland uh, Mandarin. Um, and what I would say is, of course, there's a range of uh, abilities uh, within our school for our Chinese uh, language program. And of course, we cater to the individual needs of the students of a range of different classes, uh, with additional support with our educational assistants who make such a difference, not just in Chinese, of course, but across the whole of the school, in making sure that all of our students are able to engage and make the most of the opportunities in those lessons. At, at, at international IG level, mm. so international IGCC level, we have foreign language equivalent and second language equivalent for our learners. So it does really cater to, to um, those different demands and those different skill sets and levels of competence and experience too. Sorry, I skipped a question. Um, how big are the classes in secondary and what about the nationality mix of the students? Well, I'll go for the second one first of all, because I remember the answer a little bit more having a conversation with a colleague earlier. Uh, we have over 40 different nationalities of students within the school. I mean, we are very genuine an international school um, and it's one of the most positive things about this, not just the school, but the community here as well, of course, which um, we're, we're a key part of not just Discovery Bay, but Lantau in particular, and also all the students who come from elsewhere across Hong Kong. It's that vibrancy that they get from each other. And it's the reason, one of the reasons why we have so many different cultural events throughout the year, which celebrate that. In terms of secondary class sizes, I mean, compared to, to nearly all schools across Hong Kong, you'll see that our class sizes are smaller, usually looking around 24, 25 in uh, key stage three, our year seven, eight and nine, sometimes a little bit smaller. But at IGCSNA level, um, we really try and keep the classes uh, small enough so we can give that really tailored support. Um, and often you have classes of 15 or even less throughout those phases, and particularly at the A-level, which is even smaller. And that enables us to give that individual tailor support, but also one of the reasons why our students do so well academically is we're able to tailor to their needs and be able to help them stretch and grow uh, and achieve very well academically. Another question that's come up quite often is what learning approach is used? I presume this is usually asked about key stage three, our year seven to year nines. Yeah, we, we as Simon touched on a, a little bit earlier, we, we do traditionally follow the, the English national curriculum from the UK. However, for us, that's a bespoke model. So we are very much um, embed a, a concept-based curriculum instruction approach where there's opportunities for inquir inquiry, critical thinking, problem solving, those key skills, those fundamental skills that the students will need to acquire 
and develop as they move through the school, not just through year seven, eight to nine, but that embeds that success, those strategies, those coping strategies, those those self-management skills and the tools to perform successfully beyond into years 10, 11, years 12, 13, IGCC and A-level as well. So very much a blended model there for us um, that really caters to that content learning, the understanding, those deeper and the deeper side of um, the pedagogy as well. We've got a question about living in Tung Chung. Uh, what's the typical commute like to DBIS? Well, the, the bus ride from uh, the metro station at Tung Chung is, I believe, about 15 minutes on the basis of the amount of times I've done it. And that drops you off very, very close to the site of the school. It's a very short walk down the hill straight into the site, I guess, about two minutes from there. So it, it is quite a short turnaround. If you're slightly further out in uh, Tung Chung, of course, is that initial first journey, but it's a very, very manageable journey. We do have uh, well over 100 students who come from Tung Chung. Um, uh, it's, it's, they've, when I speak to them about their journey in the morning, I mean, they always seem very happy that it's very manageable. Yes, and we're getting an increasing number from South Lantau as well, mm -hmm. um, coming over the hill. So of course. Um, there's also another question I should, um, how many classes are there per year grade? So that, that depends on the year grade. Traditionally, uh, in year mm -hmm. seven, eight, and nine, it's either uh, three or four classes, depending on numbers, um, and then usually three in year 10 and 11 as well. Uh, year 12 and 13, it's a little bit different just how the whole thing is set up because it's so specialised in their curriculum, of course, up to year 11, where they follow the IGCSE programme, every student is doing maths, every student English and sciences and certain other subjects on top of that, of course, like we said before. But when they get into uh, year 12 and 13, it's uh, much more specialised. So there's a, there's a wide range of classes that they have. Another question we quite often um, get asked is, um, is there a challenge programme for gifted students and is there a programme to support students with additional needs in the school? Absolutely, on both counts. Uh, it's key to us. I mean, we talk very much about us being an inclusive school um, and that's, that's something that we, we feel we deliver in a very strong way. So in terms of our challenge students, um, we have programmes to, to stretch our most uh, talented students, our most able students at that point in time, um, across a wide range of different aspects. Um, but we identify them using data, but also class teacher kind of uh, highlighting students we can stretch even further. I mean, it's a key thing to what we do. Uh, they're involved in many wide range in activities. Um, one example, of course, is students being entered early for examinations, but it really is much, much more than that, what we offer. And I'd encourage you to go and look for a website to see some of the many things we do there. In terms of support for students who have additional needs, that's a really key thing to what we are. So we are inclusive, that's what we're about. Um, we have a very strong inclusion team who work to offer that support partly through the educational assistants who come into the lessons, but also about offering additional things that enable our students to be engaged in the whole scope of the curriculum, uh, whatever their needs or abilities at that point in time are. Um, our teachers are highly skilled, highly trained, and they look at opportunities always to make sure that every student is able to engage with their learning in those lessons and really make the most of their opportunities. Yeah. Does anything from anybody else? Yeah, on, on that note, just to extend on that a little, um, in terms of our lesson design, we, we, we are an inclusive school. We have many mixed ability classes, absolutely. And our teachers are very skilled practitioners. Um, and that thought process and the lesson design and the provision, the goal is always to, to tailor that to individual and personalized needs. So differentiation doesn't just, isn't just about for us, of course, though, those gifted, those, those challenged students, those stretched students, but more so about the bespoke needs, the personalized needs of all of our students and ensuring that they are all suitably stretched and challenged. So differentiation is, is incredibly important to us at all levels of our, of our planning and our provision um, right up through the school. I think, <clears throat> just to step in, I think one of the great things about how we support um, learners with different needs in this school is that it offers alternative pathways to them. So they can at the same time follow the core curriculum, but also have these alternative pathways like that was mentioned earlier. So as they move up the school, eventually they'll be doing BTEC, mm. which is also a recognized uh, qualification Ooh, around the world. Um, it's great. And there's programs such as ASDAN um, that sort of Ooh. support their vocational development um, and those interpersonal skills as well. So there's real life um, application with these courses that are offered 
to students with different needs within the school. Uh, there's a question about EAL. Um, are there any EAL courses offered? Um, sorry, sorry. Yeah, no, we, we do. We do. Absolutely. We um, so students with additional needs, uh, students with additional English needs as well. Um, absolutely. So, for example, at IGCC level this year, again, we have students who will be entered for English as a second language. So we, we have those steps in place and we have that progression. And I've got another admissions question here regarding the admission process after submission of the required documents, the admission assessment will be by an online interview. Will there be any written assessment needed to thank you. Hi, Kathy. Um, the uh, uh, there isn't a formal assessment, as I said earlier, it's just we would like to see um, current and previous school reports. Uh, then at the moment we're conducting online interviews, they would normally be face to face when the restrictions are lifted. Um, in terms of a written assessment, we might ask for a piece of written work, but you can do that in your own time and then submit it to us um, for review, but there is no formal testing. Well, while we're waiting to see if there's any more questions, um, do one of you want to tell us a little bit about the service opportunities that we have for our students? Okay, so, uh, sorry, that's <laughs> very <Sorry>, good. <laughs> so, I mean, there's a, there's a wide range of service opportunities. One of the things, of course, we've not been able to be involved in this year, but it's really fundamental to what we offer is our week without walls. Mm. Uh, it's a week during the, the academic year where our secondary students go outside of school, many of them going on international trips or activities across Hong, Hong Kong. Sorry. And the idea is that as part of every single one of those that they're involved in this, this, a service element, we have four charities that we're very closely tied with and a lot of our things that we do link directly to them. Now, a video I believe you saw as part of the introductory video show, showed a few of our year 12 girls actually who had raised 70,000 Hong Kong dollars. That's, that's just a few weeks ago now for Impact Hong Kong, which is a charity which supports homeless people in Hong Kong. But they raise, we raise money and our students lead the vast majority of that for charities all across Hong Kong, but also across the world. Uh, and they do a fantastic job with that. In terms of other service, I mean, there's a, a lot of kind of opportunities uh, for our students to get involved and we look to encourage and support them. Um, we are part of the Phobicia School, which is the Federation of British International Schools in Asia. And just a few weeks ago, they were in, a number of our students were involved in a competition called Race for Good. Uh, and that was about working with actual uh, people living in a, in a Nepalese village that had been struck in, in recent years by a number of crises. And actually the activities and, and actions they took to try and help local people to either start a business or to consider how they can change a few things in a cost effective way that makes their life much, much easier and hopefully gives them a bit more positivity and hope going forwards, of course. Uh, was absolutely fantastic. They got through to the final two schools and were pipped in the very final round by one point. But it's just one of those many things that our students have been involved in, uh, in the service kind of activities. Now, this year has been a little bit different to normal times, but even with everything that's happened, our students have still been able to lead and really demonstrate their service and commitment to service. On a more local level, um, we, we, we often get the students involved in beach cleanups mm. and green walks and stuff that really um, not only raises awareness, but has a direct impact on the environment around um, Lantau Island. So mm. just a couple of local ways we also support the charities. Yes, we are very lucky with uh, our local environment, given the uh, green hills and beaches that mm. we have around, we're able to utilize them quite widely. Um, are there any more questions from anybody? Um, please feel free to pipe up. We very much would like to be able to answer anything you might have to, to ask us. Um, we do have a couple more things that do get asked. For example, um, where do our students go and, and uh, when they graduate from DBIS, either in year 11, I suppose, or year 13? Well, graduating from DBIS happens at the end of uh, year 13. I mean, we have, you know, fantastic uh, academic results. I mean, us year 13 students last year uh, got the strongest A-level results in the whole of Hong Kong and then went off to a range of excellent universities across the UK and the US. Uh, but we have students going to the US, 
to the UK, to Canada, to Australia, um, to great universities. Very recently, one of our students was accepted an offer for Berkeley, for example, but we have students uh, who've been offered places in the University of Edinburgh, uh, Ryerson in Canada in recent weeks, uh, University of Bath, uh, many, many, many different fantastic universities uh, over the world. And the A-level program is one that's really well recognised by international universities. Um, so they're well prepared to go on and study those. I, I think a point to note, which which for me, and I, I'm sure the team will agree as well for certain, is that um, regardless of the names and, and, the, and the, the sort of brand of those universities, I think the, the primary aim for us is, is ensuring that our students have the opportunity to achieve their potential and to go on to study in their desired location, the desired courses in their desired location. Um, and so for many of us, we take, we take great pride certainly in our students doing in really getting their first choice universities. That's so important to us. And that for us is a measure of success in itself, more so than the name of a university. It's going where the course suits you and that program suits your capabilities and your goals and aspirations. So we're, we're very proud of our students mm. every year. And this year just exemplifies that again, really. Are there any more questions? Would anyone like to ask anything else? Please feel free to put things up on our chat. Uh, I don't think we've got anything else to add unless you would like to have a few last words, Simon, at all. Or... I would uh, strongly encourage you to ask any questions you've got now, of course, but to reach out to us as a school. We're very happy to give you any more information you would like to know. Uh, please look through our website as well, which has got many uh, details on there, which may answer many of the questions you've got. It can show you the academic results, it can show you the university destinations of our students, but it, more importantly, it can show you the many fantastic things that our students are involved in, which develop themselves both holistically and academically, because it's something we really are focused on is that growth of our children, so they really are able to make the most of all of the opportunities they've got ahead of them. Well, um, with that, I think no more questions, and thank you very much for your time. Um, we hope you enjoyed the, the webinar and the video. And uh, as Simon says, please go to our website if you want to find out anything else, and we'd be very happy to answer your questions. And we hope to meet some of you soon in the future. So have a pleasant evening and good night.